Well, this week we are going to have a look at uh, chapter 17, uh, which talks about spatial point patterns. And it's rich of uh, examples. And so we can see that we, we know already what um, a spatial point is, but a spatial point pattern is, um, as said in the book, a countable set of points um, that by belongs to some um, particular data. Uh, and so they can be realization of um, uh, modeling applications or just observed values. Um, and they are um, such as uh, represented within a plan uh, and are sparse uh, to identify um, the a particular topic. Okay, so um, there are various uh, articles from the the author. Uh, which they have uh, basically uh, went through uh, the modeling and analyzation of these uh, sets of points uh, within um, a planar environment. And also in particular, they mentioned this SPAT, STAT package, which we can see here. Uh, so it can be solid within install packages. And once you install it, you uh, use the library function. And oops, uh, for example, it contains a, a variety of data. Um, for example, to see uh, what type of data we can do data and then packages package. Uh, start start. Um, yeah, I think it's because the spot start package um, imports other packages, and I think in this case it will be spot start dot data. The package actually. Um, uh, okay. So, yeah, I think it's spot start dot okay. data so, is the name of the package. Yeah. yeah. So here we can see um, both functions and um, these are the, the functions. We cannot see um, the data. We can even do a question mark and see that what's uh, inside. Uh, so it's uh, designed to support uh, statistical analysis of spatial data and so on. And so there are some uh, interesting um, functions. Uh, and also, you know, that when you do just data like this, um, as you can see, all data loaded um, uh, and belonging to a particular package uh, up here. Let me try this one as well. Okay. So in particular, if we do um, data package spats.data, we can see the list of the data set in this uh, package. So there are quite a number of uh, data sets and they're all about like um, distributions of um, observation within the nature, uh, um, such as tropical rainforest trees, distribution of trees, and so in this case, we look at this uh, Swedish kind uh, data set. We can load it with data and the name of the data set. 
And then uh, ever look uh, when we ever look at the data, we can. Uh, it's not a, just a data frame, but it is a, a PPP type of data set. Um, that means planar point pattern. And to access uh, the data uh, beforehand for just applying the things, we can do like dollar uh, sign. And here we have the longitude and the, the latitude, the um, number of um, Swedish pines. Um, and so uh, here, but uh, if we do like class, you can see there is class uh, planner point pattern. So we can even assign uh, this to uh, a variable and then plot it and have a look at the summary. Just if we do this, okay. So here we can see now it's a bit small, but uh, we can see that this is the what is meant for um, a planar point pattern. So it's a set of points which are sparse within a particular area, um, and so this package provides a lot of uh, those things. If we do a summary of this uh, type of uh, data, PPP, uh, we can see that if we have some um, insights such as the average intensity of the points per square units. Uh, the coordinates are integers and so rounded to the nearest unit. And then the uh, interesting thing is that we are going to see next is the, the, the is this window. So basically the area uh, in particular is called window. Okay. So basically it's like, it's like when you uh, have an area and you have some observation and on that area, you open up a window. Okay, you take a small part uh, of a squared uh, planner um, um, framework, uh, uh, um, planner environment, so that then uh, you uh, look at the uh, how the, these points uh, are within this area. Uh, uh, there is a function inside the package, which is density, and it allows us to uh, set up and have a look at the, uh, the density, setting up some uh, extra um, arguments, such as the variation, for example, of the, the density, which is, uh, in this case, sigma. Uh, and um, if we run, uh, use this function, we can see that uh, uh, it is a real value pixel image uh, within a rectangle. Okay, so we assign this to a variable named then, and then we have a look at the summary. We have some um, extra information about the pixel because then if when you plot it you can see that um, it is a con type of contour plot okay now this is made with a plot function but um, so basically identifies the area where the points are mostly located okay so if we go back to um, this plot we can see that here some oh, there's some uh, overlaps here and there, and when we look at the the density, there must uh, um, see when we do the contour um, after the plot function, it allows us to locate exactly where these peaks of density um, are located. So quite useful. Uh, the only thing is that uh, I like to personally dig inside 
uh, those things. These are uh, quite straight, fast and forward. You can use them and have immediately uh, the idea of the results. So you can see that there is um, uh, there are some like central uh, locations uh, which ranges from uh, no point no no nine to no point no one, uh, and so you have immediate information. But what if I want to dig a bit inside of the this type of um, type of data sets? Uh, if I uh, there are various of uh, example there is like this Japanese pines which allows you to do the same thing, uh, and then there is trees in a forest with this long leaf data set. Um, you can load it once you have loaded the package. You you can just name uh, the data and it will be automatically be available. And so um, in this case, uh, what I've done is loading the database package. And then when I do the dollar sign, I can see what's inside. Uh, I We have marks, um, X and Y, which we didn't have uh, in here. The this one. Uh, we didn't have marks. We had this uh, the uh, location of the points and the number of, uh, of each point with the location. While within this other one, we have also marks. Okay, what 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 is this? Uh, we can have a quick look at the explanation and this is basically uh, are the location and sizes of long leaf pine trees uh, as a point pattern okay the data record the location and the diameters of 584 long leaf pine Pinus uh, palustris, okay, so uh, within a squared region. And this region is located in uh, southern Georgia in the US, and they are collected uh, for study. So there are several analyses have considered only odol trees and everything. So Marks are the diameters at breast eight. I'm not an expert of this, so I'm not sure about this uh, breast eight in centimeters. Uh, and so also in addition to have numbers, we have also the dimension of the uh, the three. So I like to, I uh, didn't add uh, N. Maybe this is uh, Y. So if I assign a bit of uh, N is just the number of this. I'm not interested in that. And so Oh, I just wanted to go back in here because when I do dollar sign, I have also N. And here is the number of uh, N. So actually, in this case, we have just the location, not marks and uh, nothing else. Okay, so what I do is assign uh, marks X and Y to a data frame named that. So if I run this, now I have this uh, dot, and I can use ggplot with X and Y color marks, but I can even do sides. Okay, now it's 
bit of disgusting thing. Okay, so we can see the size of the trees, which are located around, they overlap in some uh, regions and everything. So as well as before, as you can see here, uh, slightly uh, different patterns appear to me. But what I was looking is this uh, X and Y. So. These uh, are not um, so they are located in Georgia, right? So if I load the data for Georgia with Natural Earth and then plot, so this is the Georgia, and he said that uh, this one here are located in the southern of Georgia. But if I want to see where are these plots, how, how do I do that? How can I do that? So, um, so here you can see there is a list of different uh, type of um, data set, uh, which are very interesting for point patterns. But now, um, this is a question for you. Um, how would you do that? Basically, you need to, to, to plot these points within the Georgia area. Um, I think you have to add a second uh, layer so you have this map and then you add a second layer with the data and you should make the coordinate reference systems uh, match each other and preferably use a projected uh, coordinate reference system because the point pattern will always be in a projected uh, coordinate reference system so yeah um, so basically be... i'm not sure if this is uh uh, so basically, the, you need to uh, transform to assign the, the coordinates and then uh, eventually transform the coordinates. But I'm not sure if we, uh, if this is enough. Okay, okay. so here this will be in uh, WGS84, um, the map. But I think you best the best thing would, would be to transform the map. But the the thing is, you need to know which coordinate reference system the data are in. So the, the spatial point patterns, the question is which um, which coordinate reference system are they in? And it was a yeah. long leave, right? I'm not yeah. sure. Uh, you see what's happening when I do. Okay, so this is the the Georgia here, and um, yeah, then I can okay. add the layer. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, um, I see, but is the Original um, point pattern data set, is it in uh, WGS84? I'm looking in the documentation, but I think it's not mentioned, but normally uh, you would expect, yeah. So the, the units to begin with uh, doesn't match. You, you, I mean, the coordinate reference system of the data set, it also has units. So and in the case of WGS84, uh, so that's uh, the EPSG code 4326, and the unit will be a degree, which is not a fixed distance anyway. 
So that one would need to be transformed to the coordinate reference system that we are using here. Um, so uh, one could take any, perhaps any projected coordinate reference system. So uh, for example, a UTM, a projected coordinate reference system to project the map uh -huh. of Georgia in. Uh -huh. And then, but that would need so a transformation of the Georgia object first with ST transform to a UTM. CRS, and then you could assume that the point pattern location is, yeah, it's small enough to just fit in that CRS, but you still would have to convert the units of that PPP object to the units that are being used in the UTM uh, coordinate reference okay. system. And I but think, yeah, so okay. you would have to transform both. Mm -hmm. um, so ST transform with the Georgia map and also just uh, calculated transformation by replacing, by, by adjusting the units, I think, mm -hmm. because I expect that the, you yeah, know, this is the unit of the long leaf. I, what was it? Um, uh, so this year, this year I was just, uh, you know, I'm, I was digging in uh, within these things. Um, so this is uh, can be interesting uh, things to see, but mm -hmm. uh, this may be not the, exactly the purpose of this chapter. Because yeah, exactly. So, maybe, but yeah, the 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 long leaf data set it's in meters, mm -hmm. and I. I don't know actually by by heart uh, whether UTM is in meters or in, or in kilometers. In meters, in meters. So they they, they it's in meters. So that's fine. Oh, but we need okay, the, okay. The, then you would just yeah, you would just need to transform the Georgia object to UTM, and then you could map and map them on top of each other, and mm -hmm. you would need to be able to zoom in because uh, otherwise on the whole map of. Georgia, you won't not, will not see it so because it's too small, I think. Okay. So if we use uh, the density function uh, with some sigma for now, I've used this, the same one. We can see that the density uh, of the trees is about here where we see overlapping things. And the contour plot allows us to identify those areas. There are a, va a variety of other um, data set that are quite interesting, such as this one here, Castilla Forest Fires. And um, uh, if you plot this, you see you have more than one you have a cause, burnt area, date, so different things. And then Amster tumor data. And so uh, this is quite interesting. So you can like have uh, um, a look around. Um, so this is uh, just um, before to, to jump on the next chapter, I just want to have a quick look at this density function. Oops, which hopefully, uh, so basically this is uh, just a uh, regular density function from the stats package. So we use the density function, uh, which is not from the uh, spa stat package. Okay, it's just from the... It's actually a method that has been added. If you um, request the documentation of spotstat.ppp, uh, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm mistaken, I mean density.ppp. Um, A density? Yes, density.ppp. Um, then you will get... Um, documentation from this method, okay. which is an extension indeed of the density function from stats, but specifically for the point pattern object type, and it's in the spotstat.explore package. Mm -hmm. So basically uh, the sigma 
sigma is this uh, smoothing bandwidth, um, which is always standard deviation. So the the variation of the isotropic smoothing within the kernel. The kernel is the, you know, uh, the the base of the the pattern uh, and. When you have uh, it's it's like uh, the area of the identification of the patterns, and so um, it's it's um, you use this to identify um, where are the peaks uh, within the kernel, which is the available area where these points are found, basically. Uh, the weights, okay, we haven't used the weights, but you can use weights uh, and other things. Uh -uh. So uh, in this one, for example, you can specify the type of kernel if the points have, uh, such as cushion, um, motion things so shape you can specify the type of kernel um, and then it will be focusing on that shape basically um i don't know if you want to add anything else on this chapter before i go i jump on the other one um, let's look perhaps it's interesting to know that there are yeah a few functions which can be called to extract the components of a point pattern object but actually i think it's in chapter 18 that it uh, is yeah. really yeah. used so okay so i have i think, don't think there were other things from from my side to be added. Yeah, okay. It okay. Was, interesting, let, let... was interesting to know that um, there is also the possibility to, of, of having uh, multiple mark variables in the CLM files. So that's also uh, uh -huh. good. But I think maybe. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here, what we do is basically. Uh, create um, a special point patterns and um, uh, uh, and this is uh, this is quite interesting so we can again load the same the same package because it uh, if we see as we saw before uh, we do another time oh sorry double colon okay here uh, there is a list of uh, function that can be uh, used. And okay. And uh, there is also this um, window function, observed window. This function here. This is, this means observed window. So where you within a. Uh, a certain area, which is the, the your window, the observation within the window, and so allows you create a window, create an object, an object of class O win, uh, representing an observation window in the two dimensional plane. Plane. Um, if you specify the X and the Y range and the mask, optional logical matrix giving 
extra information about the data. Uh, and so let's have a look at the example. So for example, if we just randomly use a range uh, 0, 1, and 0, 2 for x and y, our window, it's now a rectangle of this uh, image. You can even plot it. Oops. Okay, so this is a, a width. Obviously, then you specify if you have a, a different dimension, such as random uniforms, X, then you, again, with these uh, uh, values, you can create an object uh, a PPP object, oops, such as in this case, um, within this window. So we are now plotting all the this observation within a window, this window here. And so we have created a planar point pattern object with a thousand points. And if we plot it, we can see how they are distributed. Can you specify the axis this way? an idea of uh, where they are. Then uh, we can extract the observation window of the point pattern with uh, a function window. Have a look at this. Um, extract or change the window. So given a special object, um, we can basically have a look at this, um, what is the window. In the, in the case, let me cross this too. Uh, what I was uh, looking at this data, okay, where is that? This long leaf. If I want to see window oh, long diff, it says it is a rectangle um, 200 for 200. So that this is uh, basically the reason for which we don't have coordinates. So this is a, just a, an area uh, and we decided the dimension of this area. Yes. And of course you, you need to have the coordinates in, yeah. in a coordinate reference system, right? Uh, yeah. So, so we do, if we don't know where it is exactly, we cannot plot it in a map. Exactly. But, uh, and then we can even have a look at the marks with, the, with this other function, uh, marks, and use the same thing. Um, so this is uh, the data set, obviously, if it's used, uh, on synthetic data as uh, the data we have created here, we can assign as we are now building up 
Um, so we have seen how to use the window on, uh, on our data. But uh, going back into creating one, um, we do window of X. Uh, you remember that we have set up this window. And so we can have a look at the window here. And also we can set up marks with points and uh, even with this um, operator, uh, percent mark percent. And so this is the damage case of trees um, and everything. So let's use just uh, this way to assign the marks. And now if I have a look at the, the data, I have marks, X and Y, the number of points, which are now a hundred. And, and so I can have a look at the marks. Because I assign points. And when I plot X, X, can see there are some some dif different uh, sizes. And so with a wind, we can establish uh, a window. With window function, we can have a look at what is this uh, uh, window look like, looks like how this window is effectively what are the dimensions if I if we don't know, then we can create a pattern point um, uh, object, uh, PPP object with the function PPP, uh, setting the core, the, yeah, these are uh, the coordinates of the points within the window. Um, and add the window. For example, here we have changed the window to be instead of, as before, it was zero, one, and two uh, was a rectangle, zero, one, and zero, two. Now we have a, we are building up a, a square window, squared window. Uh, zero five zero five, and so now, as you can see, the points are all on on the corner, and this is because our x and y are made within a specified range, and so. Um, the oh, interesting thing is that this inside dot o win function can be used to test whether a set of points lie within a particular observation window. So if we set win to a win without anything inside and then use mark of our data uh, with the inside of win function, um, we can see uh, just where are they actually uh, within located within their window, the effective window. Which is interesting. Uh, also, uh, now, now is um, uh, the interesting thing is um, converting um, a PPP object to an SF object. 
And, um, and so what basically, we, if we use long live and we assign to X, uh, and then create the data frame as I did it before. And then um, we just uh, say that these are the coordinates, X and Y, with uh, special, po um, special point as a simple feature. Then uh, from uh, so this is a basically a way to uh, change uh, our data to be a simple feature. Uh, vice versa, if we want to do uh, the reverse, what we do is that we have the coordinates of D. Uh, we set the box inside as this as.ppp function and then check, assign the marks and plot it. So, for example, in this case, which is uh, what we wanted, is that if we are looking at Brazil, medium. Uh, uh, and transform the coordinates to be specific looking at uh, that point with this um, uh, EPSG and then set the window on the map and we can look at the points in there. So going back to where we were, if we do win, okay. uh, do so, 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 I go back here. Okay, which I had the Georgia. Okay, like this. Here, so I had Georgia. Sorry about that. Okay, so type um, maybe it's better if I just use exactly this with just uh, changing the country to be Georgia. Okay, now we don't have this, uh, the specification, but uh, what we can do, it's have a look at this. But I'm not connected. Connected sounds here. Can be reached. Strange things happen. Uh yes, CRS is poor. Okay. So filter by name. Yeah. Yes, I think uh, you have to uh, point at Georgia in the map because a filter by name is the name of the coordinate reference system. Okay. Aha. <laughs> okay. And where is it? Yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. Ooh. I use uh, this one here, to be honest. 
when I use it, when I need it. Okay. So, South Georgia is uh, with transformation. Uh, do you think we should, we could use this one? Yeah, it's because uh, in the CRN Explorer, you still had to select um, projected. Uh -huh. So there was a tick box projected, and then you get 48 uh, possible projected coordinates reference systems. Uh... Okay. Uh, let's let's try that. Nothing. Uh... Okay. So our map is Georgia, and now we transform this to to be that. We have this window in the map. It doesn't work. You execute the transformation? I think so. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, absolutely wrong. But uh, I think I, I don't get that 4,722 uh, in the VCRS Explorer. I do get another one. Um, should I take George? Uh, I can take this. Um, okay. UTN yeah, zone no. 17N I have here. I can copy it in the chat. Maybe, but I'm not entirely sure it will be the right one. I don't understand what I am doing, to be honest. Okay, so that like it, uh, we um, this is outside of my. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think I faced uh, one for Georgia in the chat. It was it's in Amazonia, South of America. Yes. Okay. I use South of America. Now, if you take two six seven one seven, it should be fine, I think. Ah, uh, no, yes. All right. There are still other ones. Um... Why these things appear? Hmm. Or better is it actually based on? Uh, it's probably better. Or... Okay, so this is not absolutely, and this is also the south of Georgia. But anyway, mm -hmm. which is where? Okay, let's say that. And now? In the chat, I've pasted uh, another EPSG code, which is should be fine for Georgia. Okay. Okay. Oh, what? Yeah, you have to, yes. Okay. I don't know why I did it. Uh, but okay, let, let's let's forget. Um, okay, so then um, our X is. Um, Uh, the long leaf. Yeah, actually, I think that will be difficult because you cannot reference it in the 
a coordinate reference system of the map. So I think it's will, what will work is uh, create a new one as in here, but the long leaf, yeah, you, you have to know where it's um, anchored in the coordinate reference system of the map. So the long leaf is just a square of 200 by 200 meters, but we do not know where it is. But the wind, the window of long leaf, we know what is this. Uh, yeah, but there we do not know where it is. This is just a, a local coordinate system without reference to uh, the world. Okay. What if we do this uh, like 200? Mm -hmm. Uh oh. This has taken the, the entire area. Yeah, exactly. It's because the window has been defined as the boundary of Georgia. Uh -huh. So, and with run, run if point, so it's a random points, uniformly random distributed points, you just generate or simulate points within that boundary. So you, you simulate the planner point pattern uh, within the boundary. So we here you have a, um, a boundary polygon in this case. So the, win the observation window is, uh, is just uh, the border of Georgia. And you generate with, with runoff point, you generate um, a point pattern within that window. So this has nothing to do with long leave, of course, but it's the only thing we can do to make it match, okay. so to yeah. say. Uh -huh. Yeah, we should we should select like just the south of Georgia and then position to see. But okay, so that's what I wanted to do. And so we have uh, basically a way to convert simple feature to point patterns and vice versa. Okay, yeah. great. All right, I have no further questions or remarks. Did you want to add something? No, it's okay. I'll have cut. Okay.